she's always been ahead of her time. She's an educator and a visionary. She's an inspiring leader known to rise to any occasion. She's Geeta Narayanan. So we can either have a conversation right now or I can just pull out your CV and read it for 20 minutes. <laughs> What would you prefer? Conversation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Gita, let's start with what you were like in your 20s. You know, were you always this ambitious? Actually not. Uh, I think my friends who were in college uh, with me always, when we meet again mm -hmm. uh, at uh, reunions, which are infrequent because many of them are uh, in the United States and other parts of the world, always look at me and say, what happened? You were so laid back and such a daydreamer. Where did all this energy come from? Yeah. So really, you, you change as life goes on. Let's start with Malia Aditi. Mm -hmm. You started in a very small way um, with a trust. And apparently, the trust started with 1,000 rupees. Well, the trust, the trust started in Tara Chandavakar's house. And I really have to say that if we're here to honor women, we have to honor women like her, too, because uh, she is an inspiration to me, and if I'm every anything I am, it's because of people like her. It started in her house, the trust. Yeah. <laughs> we did. So t tell us, you know, why were you? You were you were a school teacher. You started yeah. your career as a school teacher. Uh, how does a school teacher want to go ahead and start opening large institutions? You know, where do you where do you start with that big step? I didn't start with that in mind. I had uh, I was always a school teacher. But I had two children. I loved having them. And I was really, really unhappy with where they were going to school. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter which school they were going to, but there were a lot of us who were unhappy at that time. You know, In 1982, six of us started the Ujwar Trust. The office was in my house. And uh, the school started in Tara Chandavakar's house, 1,000 rupees. And, and how many students? Well, to get to 30 students took us quite a long time. And um, we have I gone can't believe that. every day, door to door. And I can remember my husband coming home every day and saying, got any kids yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so what would you, well, you knock on the door and? From 30 to 85, it happened in five months. There are a couple of stories here that are really worth telling. Um, we really struggled to build that school, which I know now, you know, people line up outside our doors to say that they have to come in. And uh, Anne and I, you know, Passage to India was being filmed in Bangalore at that time, and they were selling off their sets. And Anne and I went when they were selling off the sets, and we bought her a table and a chair. <laughs> uh, we got an old typewriter, and uh, we got some cricket nets. <laughs> That's what we started with. You seem to have always been in different stages in your life, always been at the fundraising side of things. So, yeah. you know, from day one, from starting with a thousand rupees, and then, you know, you, you move to every time you move to a bigger campus. So can you tell, share your stories? Well, that's, that's the way you have to be when you, want in, when you want an institution to grow, you know. You think that you're going to run a school just for your kids. And then you have 85 kids, and you've got 175 kids, and then every... Every March, I remember, I used to think, oh, now what's coming next? Because people are going to say, can we have two more classrooms? Can we have a library? Can we have a computer room? And you just get used to it. You just get used to building more and more, but from a, in a very small way. But the big jump came when we built the big campus. And then I think I really learned and fell in love with design. Because the planning of that school and the interaction with the architects, the competition, the way it has turned out to be was both a labor of love, but a real, I really did become very passionate about design in that process. It is a really unique building, and even when I was in school 15, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it was really, yeah. again, beyond its time, you yeah. know? I, I think I appreciate it, was, it more and more now. Yeah. It is such a, a modern building. But there's a story you, to be told there as well. Oh, right. We had a design competition because we all decided that, you know, we couldn't pick an architect out of a hat. We would have a jury and a competition. And I contact, contacted the Institute of Architects, and we put an external jury, mm -hmm. Christopher Benninger. And guess who won it? 
a bunch of students from BMS College. Love it. <laughs> and that was their work. Really? That story I that didn't know. That was their work, yes. It Brilliant. was three young kids who'd gone to a company and said, can we put, uh, 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 can we put our design in, in your name? <laughs> okay. And that's what we did. We, we ended up with three design students who actually gave us a world class and a very beautiful building. I have been talking to several of your students and faculty as well, that, uh, you know, your old colleagues. And um, one colleague of yours, Mrs. Kinney, Tara Kinney, said that, you know, one thing that was really special about you is that you really pushed professional development for, mm -hmm. for the teachers. Mm -hmm. And that you would even send them abroad to do, the, you know, further their studies. Yeah. You know. Well, that started with myself. Because I did that at the, in, in the mid-90s, 94 actually, to be specific. My husband was living in, in London at that time. And it gave me the opportunity to go back to study. And, um, and I have this habit that when I do something, I feel that everybody else has to do it as well. <laughs> so I came back and I told everybody, you know, the greatest thing in life is to go back to college when you're older. You, you know you can just enjoy yourself and you can have a blast. And then I said, well, who'd like to go next? And then... Um, you know, Anne looked at me and she said, well, Geeta, who's going to pay for this? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll find the money. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll find the it. money. I'll, do I'll find the money. I'll, I'll make That's sure amazing. that it doesn't come out of the school fees. We're going, I go now cap in hand. I'll ask people. Right. But I think that this is such a great school. And let's, let's give people a chance. And for the next, I think, at least right up to the year 2000, every year we managed to get people to go off to Oxford Brooks in the UK to, to take a degree. And I think it contributed very much to uh, the scaling of uh, Aditi into being the world-class institution it right, is today. Right. Um, and then we had so many people who were so good at what they were doing that they could begin doing it internally as well, you know, making teachers enthusiastic. And that's been a great project. Tell me about Srishti, your, your, the design school. Um, how did that get born? Accident. <laughs> um, we were building Aditi, and we had this big hole between the high school and the admin block, which we said was going to be a vocational school. I mean, it was in the plan that we were going to do something in, the, in vocational education. And uh, when I was raising money, I went to see Narayan Vagul at ICICI. And um, after many pitches, uh, and you know, when you're meeting somebody as famous as Narayan Vagul, uh, I was told that, look, you get two minutes with a great man, and in two minutes, he will decide whether he's ever going to talk to you longer than two minutes. Mm -hmm. or, but whatever I did and said, I can't remember what I said, but I obviously got a second chance. But when I went back to see him a second chance, he said, uh, if you think I'm going to support more of the same, you're mistaken. Uh, you come back with a professional education program and a different institution run by the same trust, and I'll support it and you can finish your building. And then we came back and put our heads together and said, well, what do you want to do? And that's how Shishti was born. It was born and because somebody and I from scratch ICI, all over again. And we had to start from <laughs> scratch all over again. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the largest institutions. Everybody's heard of it. Yeah. Uh, how would you say Shishti does things differently from other institutions? Well, for one, you know, you always had art, design, and technology. How, yes. how did you have the foresight how, you know, to, to include technology in this? I think that we, that was again a, a set of circumstances that we were, I was in conversation with people uh, in, in other parts of the world, including MIT. And mm -hmm. I think that we decided that India had IITs or Institute of Technology, we had JJ and other schools of art, and then we had National Institute of Design. And then we said, why don't we put it all together right. and call it Art, Design and Technology. In 2001, uh, you had a, a group of Srishti stu students at the Burj earthquake. Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, my, you know, my, I can just feel my uh, the hair standing on end. It was the 26th of January, and I turned on the television just by accident, and they said, there's been an earthquake, epicenter Burj, and I knew that I had 26 of them. I had four, three faculty, and they said that it was Anjar. Uh, it was the worst 48 hours of my life. Because, you know, when you have to get somebody, get out there to find out. And they survived because of their collective good sense and uh, I think the grace of God. That 
two, of, two or three of them were very seriously injured, including one faculty. But they held together, and it took us 48 hours to find them. I heard that you know your your house was the epicenter of the rescue yes. mission, yes. and uh, you had oh, you know in, called uh, pulled whatever string that yes. you could and called we the did. army, called the navy. You had mobilized. Yes. Uh, we did. You know, it, it, it was a rescue it, it, it was, mission. I never want to go back. I never want to go back to making those 26 calls that I had to make to those families to say I don't know where your child is, but I'm going there. They all and we will we will do whatever it takes to bring them back and. Uh, we had to actually bring some of them back in very critically uh, wounded conditions, and but we did manage it. And uh, I think it's it's really something that we will remember forever. But is it true that many of them went back to help out? Many of them went back to uh, help out, and today I work in Kutch because of that too. I, I work with six NGOs on a board and I go back twice a year and I take kids back because I always feel that it's a very special state, it's a very special place, and I'd like to continue to be associated with That's it. That's a true testament to the type of leader you are, you know. If these poor kids would have been so traumatized yeah. and they actually went back yes, to go we all, we help the community. Back. We all went that back. That is fantastic, we all went Gita. Back. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel like you've always been swimming against the current? And do you feel that game changers don't often get the popular vote? I think I've always been swimming against the current. And popularity has never been uh, something I wanted, so I haven't missed it. Um, it's tiring to have to swim against the current, but somebody has to do it. And um, if we're all happy with the status quo, Namo, there will never be change. I agree with you. I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, that's what this is Swimming about. Swimming too. <laughs> that's what this is about. What about your work-life balance? My work's my life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that, that, fair. Yeah, that's, many people say, have you got a life? And I say, yes, I have my work. Yeah. I think that's fair. We're all searching for that, aren't we? <laughs> so now, uh, you know, once again, you know, as a, you should all just look up her CV on LinkedIn. You know, it's like, you know, it's really gaining momentum, you know, <laughs> as you, the years pass. And so now, you know, once again, you're in your 60s. Yes. And you are starting your first for-profit venture. I have started. <laughs> I formed last year my first for-profit company called Pepper Slate. Uh, it's a design and innovation company. And uh, again, I'm at the bottom of the ladder. We have no money and we have to work <laughs> our way up. <laughs> So, you know, we, we're just fascinated with your journey, Geeta, but I'm not going to let you go yet. Okay. I'm having my quickie with Geeta Narayanan. <laughs> Ever considered politics? No. What time did you wake up today? 4.30. <laughs> Embarrassing nickname. There has to be one. I think Sure Death, I think it was. <laughs> that, was, that, was that was an Aditi nickname. They used to call me Sure Death. Sure Death. <laughs> <laughs> How did you lose all this weight? Ah. Uh, that was called a combination of Ayurveda and willpower. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a willpower. <laughs> Fabulous. Put that on your CV. You're looking great. <laughs> Thank you. Prefer cocktails and dinner or a thali lunch? Cocktails and dinner. <laughs> Your greatest contribution to society? I think it's, it's not a single contribution, but I think that I hope I give it to every single student or person that I've talked about, is the ability to do dangerous things and take a risk without being afraid of falling flat on your face. Mm -hmm. and that's what I tell everybody, and I think, and I think people live that. Thank you, Geeta. Geeta Narayanan.